Hello and welcome. So previously we have created a Ruby on Rails application that utilizes the Stripe payment system in which we can add or remove products in the code and pay for our products using the Stripe checkout. And now we are going to create a slightly different application. We are going to create a software as a service application where users will be able to make not just one-time payments to purchase products, but to subscribe for a service. So here is a mock-up of the application that we are going to build. The users are going to be able to log in using the gem device and they will be given a Stripe customer ID. As well, the users will have access to the posts. They will be premium and they will be not premium posts. Only users that are subscribed to a paid subscription and where the subscription is active, these kind of users will be able to see the premium posts and users that uh, do not have an active premium subscription will not be able to see the premium posts. So now we are going to create this application step by step, feature by feature. And we are going to start with an empty Ruby on Rails application. So here I have already created a new Ruby on Rails application. I named it SaaS blog, software as a service blog. It's basically going to be a blog where users can sign up and uh, pay a subscription to see the premium content. And I have created a Git repository with just one commit of creating the new application. And now we are going to start building it. So first of all, we are going to scaffold our posts. Now we are going to have posts that will have a title, content, and we will have a boolean to set the post as premium or not premium. So let's do it. We will say Rails generate scaffold posts. Then there will be a title, there will be content that is text, and there will be a boolean uh, that is premium. So premium boolean. Okay. But again, many people don't like scaffolds because they create a lot of messy files, a lot of files that we will not be using. So I'm also going to add some additional commands to our scaffold. I'm going to take it from my blog, where the blog post is named how to write better generators. And I'm going to say no helpers, no assets, no controller specs, no view specs, no jbuilder, so that we generate only the model, view controllers, and the migration. So we have generated it. And let's have a look at our DB, migrate, create posts. Now we will add the some additional validations to our uh, PostgreSQL uh, table. So we will say null, false for the title. So that the title can definitely not be uh, empty on a datable is level. Okay, now let's run Rails DB migrate and start the Rails server. So no root measures products, okay. So we have no root path. I will go to posts and here we have our posts. Okay, works. So let's now save our changes and then we will continue. We have just scaffolded our posts. So git add all, git commit main, scaffold posts. Okay, and now we will add some post validations and we will add a root path. So let's go first of all to our config roots and here we will add root. Uh, to posts index. So it will have the root path to post controller index action. Now let's start our server and see if it works. I will go to the root path. And yes, we have our posts. Now let's add some basic navigation. So I will go to our app uh, views. And in application HTML ERB, we will add a link to our posts equals link to posts, posts, path. And we will add an additional break. Let's see. And here we have our posts. So no matter on what page we are, we will have a link to our posts. And let's also add some additional validation because you see now we can create a post with an empty title, empty content. So we'll go to our posts model and add these validations. We go to post.rb and we will say, validates uh, title and content presence true 
and def to s title and okay now let's see i will try to edit this post i update and i have two errors title and content cannot be blank so we will add something to the title and to the content and update okay looks better so we have added some basic uh, validations for our posts and we have added the navigation and a root path. let's save our changes i will go to the console that get status get at all get commit main and i will say posts validations and the navigation okay looks good and now let's actually add some uh, sample posts so we will uh, use our seeds file in db seeds to uh, generate some random posts so that we don't have to do it manually and for this we're going to use the gem named faker so faker is a gem to create the fake data in the database and now we'll install the gem i'll take gem faker and go to our gem file to the bottom okay now i will run bundle and I will go to seeds. Now it's still running bundle. And in the meantime, I will say uh, post.create. And what does a post need to have? It needs to have a title. Then it needs to have uh, content. And it needs to have uh, a premium, either true or false. So premium. Okay. Now, did the bundle run? Yes, it did. Okay. So we are going to generate posts using the gem faker. And the gem faker gives us the possibility to uh, run faker name name and will give us a random name. And in this specific case, we are going to use faker lorem. So it will generate us uh, random sentences. So we will say faker lorem word count three to generate uh, uh, something that contains three words. Then we will go and say uh, faker lorem.sentence to generate just a sentence. Like this. And for premium, we want to have it as a random, either true or false. Now, for this, we're going to say true, comma, false, dot sample. And this is basically going to give us a random true or false value. We can actually check it in our console. I will start a new console session. So CD Rails console and run true false sample. Sample like this. And you see it gives us, now it's given us a lot of truths, but also some falses. So it gives us a random true or false. Okay, looks good. So true false dot sample. Okay, and we don't want to generate just one post like this. We will say something like 10 dot times do generate this post 10 times. So it would generate us 10 posts and end statement. So running Rails DB seed should now generate 10 posts into our database. Rails DB seed. Let's see, I refresh now, and you see it generated us 10 additional posts that have some kind of random titles, random content, and random true or false. So random premium or not premium. Okay, looks good. So this is the basic way how you can use seeds to populate your database and the gem faker. So let's save our changes. I will say git status, git status once again to see the changes. Then git add all, git commit main, uh, gem faker to generate fake posts. Okay, looks good. And now we are going to install the gem device to allow our users to log into the application. So I also have it open somewhere here. Now I will close the tabs that they are not using. And I'm going to install the gem device. So let's do it. Here I have the gem device. I'm going to add it to our gem file and run bundle. 
Okay. Uh, next, we are going to run Rails generate device install. Let's see what files it gives us. So it gave us a file device.rb and initialize it to configure device and the device envml, the translation file, and also gave us a list of things that we need to do to install device properly. So we are going to install to add this line for configuring action mailer to our config environment development.rb. Okay, next, uh, what are we going to do? We already have a root to home index and we're going to add these notices and alerts. So I will copy it. Now I have something wrong with my mouse, just a moment. Okay, so I will copy it and paste it in our application HTML. What do we need to do next? We don't need to generate device views, so that's fine. Let's go back to the installation and we need to generate a device model. So the model that is going to be able to log in, it's going to be a user. A user is going to be able to log in. So we will run rails generate device user. Okay, and we'll run rails db migrate. So the migration is done. And uh, we have our server running in another tab, but uh, as we have uh, installed a new initializer, we definitely need to restart the server, Rails S. Okay, so we have our server running, and if we go to our routes, we have these new device routes. So in theory, we can go to slash users, slash sign in, and this route is working. It is because we installed device and uh, added this line device for users in our roots.rb automatically. Okay, but now let's make it so that a user that is not logged in cannot see the content of our application. So for this, we're going to add this before action, authenticate user to our application controller. And if we add it to our application controller, then no other controllers and actions will be available unless there is a user that is logged in. So I add this command. I refresh and you see you have to be logged in to access the posts. You see you get this message you need to sign up. So I will sign up an email address, a password, done. And you see I have signed up successfully and I see the posts. So it looks good. Anything else we need for device? Yeah, just the navigation. Now I'm also going to copy the basic navigation from my uh, blog. Basically, I'm going to say that if there is a current user, I will have a link to the current user email and uh, the path to change the email, change the user's email or password or delete the account or the link to log out. And if the user is not logged in, there will be a link to log in or to register. So I will copy this and add it to our basic navigation in our application HTML. Right here. Okay, now I refresh and you see we have the current user's email address and the, it is also a link to edit the user, the password and to cancel the account and a link to log out. If a user is not logged in, we have a link to log in and to register. So looks quite good. Now we have installed device so that users can authenticate inside the application and users that are not logged in, cannot see any content of the application. Looks good. Let's save our changes. So git status, git add all, git commit main gem device, install gem device. Okay, good. And next step, we want users that are that have an active subscription to be able to see uh, all the posts and users that don't have an active subscriptions uh, not to be able to see all the posts only they will able be able to see the free posts so what are we going to do we are going to add uh, additional fields to our user model we will actually be adding two fields to our 
uses model. So let's run Rails generate migration, add subscription, subscription fields to users. And now we will go into the migration file, add subscription fields to users, and add two more fields. Add column to the users table, and the column name is going to be plan. So a user can be subscribed to a gold, silver, or bronze, best, or good, better, the best. So like you can also have different tiers of plans and uh, based on the plan, a user can have different access rights. So let's say good, better, the best, but for now it will be just at column users plan and it's going to be string. And we're going to say at users subscription status and uh, it is going to be also string and by default it is going to be incomplete so when a user just signs up he still didn't uh, sign up to any subscription to any plan so his default subscription status will be incomplete okay now let's run these two migrations we will add this actually this one migration but with two columns Okay, we've done it. Let's start our server. And let's display the user's plan and subscription status in the navigation. So we will go to application HTML ERB. And we will say that uh, if there is a current user in a separate uh, uh, line, we will display the uh, current user dot plan and current user dot subscription status. Let's see if it works. It works. So we see that the subscription status is incomplete, but there is no plan. It is new. That's why we did not see it. Let's also make this into different lines. We will say plan and the subscription status. So here the user sees his plan if he has a current plan and his subscription status that by default is incomplete. And now we'll, we'll make it so that users with an incomplete subscription status can see only the free posts and the ones that have an active subscription status can see all the posts. So for this, we will go to our uh, controller, to our post controller. And here we will say that uh, if uh, current user dot subscription status equals active, then we will see all the posts. Otherwise, we will see not all the posts, but only the posts that are uh, free. So we need to define what free posts are because uh, the application doesn't know what free stands for. So we are going to create a new scope. We will go to our models, post.rb, and we will create a new scope. Let's say, uh, scope free and we will say where uh, premium is false that's how we define free let's refresh and the scope works so a user with the incomplete subscription status sees only posts that uh, have premium set to false. Looks kind of good. Now let's go to our console and uh, try manipulating this uh, subscription status of the current user. Let's say user.first.update and we will update the subscription status to active. Okay, now we will start the server, Rails server. And you see, now we see all the posts. So looks kind of good. Now, we will also want to add this uh, kind of validation, not only to the post index, but to each individual post. So for example, here we have premium true. I open this post and I can see the link to open the post because my subscription status is uh, active. But what if uh, my current users 
subscription status is not active but incomplete. So I will go to our posts and I see only the posts that are not premium, but still I can have access to a post that is premium. And I need to add this additional validation for the post show action. So we'll be able to view the post only if uh, our subscription status is active, if the post is uh, uh, a premium post. So let's say if uh, at post dot premium, uh, no, 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 vice versa. We'll say if uh, post is premium and the uh, current user no, 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 differently. So let me think. So if the post uh, is premium and the current user subscription status is not active, then we will redirect to, to the post path with an alert uh, only, for uh, only for active subscribers. Okay, let's see if it works. So I will refresh and you see, I was trying to access a post uh, that uh, is only for active subscribers and I got redirected. Now let's uh, check this logic once again. So where was this post? Now I can't even find it. I will uh, change my subscription status to active. I will open a post that is premium, so show. Here I have a premium post. And I, will, I will add this logic back. And let's see, I will refresh. Now I didn't save, oh yeah. I will set my subscription status to incomplete. Now I refresh and you see, I was redirected to the post path with a notice that this post is only for active subscribers. So that's basically it. We've set up the basic logic of our application that uh, only active subscribed users can access premium posts. And in the next video, we're going to install Stripe and uh, make it possible for users to subscribe and uh, pay recurring uh, payments to access our application. And that's it for this video. Now I'm just going to save our changes and push to Heroku. And the application will be available on Heroku as sourceblog.herukuapp.com. So feel free to visit and see how it works. Thank you. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah.